We covered PHP date and time functions in the first section of the course in lesson 1.25. In this lesson, we'll look at how to work with dates and times and time zones OOP way using daytime objects. We can create daytime objects this way using the daytime class, which can accept two optional arguments. The first one is the daytime string and the second one is the time zone. The valid formats for the daytime string are the same ones that are valid for string to time functions. So whatever you would pass into string to time function, you could also pass it here and it would work. Let's open the terminal and run this code and we see that we get the daytime object with the current date and time and it uses the default time zone which is UTC in this case and this can be changed which we'll talk about in a few minutes. We can pass in some valid formats here like tomorrow for example run the code and we get tomorrow's date with the time being midnight because we haven't specified the time but we could also specify the time this way for example and we run the code again and we see that now we're getting 3 35 p.m. We can change this to be yesterday noon and we run the code and we see that we're getting yesterday's date 12 p.m. Or we could simply pass in a formatted date here. So we could pass in something like May 12, 2021, 3.30 p.m. If we run the code, sure enough, we get that date and time. The second optional argument that we could pass here is the date time zone object. The supported time zone names can be found on the PHP's documentation. And as always, I'll post the links to all the resources in the description. So check them out. Let's open the PHP's documentation for the list of supported time zones and let's pick one of the time zones from here. I'm going to pick Europe and let's pick the first one for example. Let's go back in here and paste it in here. Let's run the code and as you can see the time zone has been changed to Amsterdam but the time has not been changed. That's because we're being explicit here and we're saying that we want to have a daytime object for 3 30 p.m. Now because we're passing in the time zone it's still giving us the 3 30 p.m. but that's 3 30 p.m. in Europe Amsterdam time time zone. We could change the time zone on the fly using set time zone method and that would actually adjust the time. So for example if we remove this from here or maybe we had another time zone here it doesn't matter but let's say that in this case we're using the default UTC time zone and it's set to 3 30 p.m. We could var dump the daytime object and then we can change the time zone using the set time zone method and pass in the time zone object here and let's var dump the daytime again and let's see what we get. Let's clear this out run the code and as you can see on the first one we're getting the UTC time 3 30 p.m and on the second var dump we're getting the Europe Amsterdam time zone but the time has been adjusted and it's 5 30 p.m now instead of the 3 30 p.m instead of var dumping daytime objects we could also simply format the days using the format method which accepts the format string as the argument and the valid formats are the same ones that it would pass into the date function that we covered in the first section of the course so we could simply echo out daytime format format and pass in the valid format here and we could do the same thing after setting the time zone and let's get rid of the var dumps let's clear this out run it again and sure enough we're getting the 3 30 in the utc time zone and we're getting 5 30 in the amsterdam time zone we could also use the get time zone method to get the time zone object and then call get name on that time zone object to get the name of the time zone to make sure that we are in the correct time zone so we could do date time get time zone get name and let's concatenate that and clear this out run it again and sure enough we're getting UTC for the first one and we're getting Europe Amsterdam for the second one we could also change the date and time on the given daytime object on the fly using the set date and set time methods. So let's change the date of the daytime object using set date method and we can pass in the year, month and day as the argument. So let's set it to 2021 April 21st instead. Now let's run the code and sure enough before the change it's set to May 12 and after the change it's set to April 21st. We could also change the time using the set time method so we can chain that method call right here so we can do set time and pass in hour minute second and even microsecond to set the proper time so let's say that we wanted to change it to 2 15 a.m let's run the code and sure enough before the change it's set to 3 30 and after the change it's set to 2 15 so we have changed both date and time as you noticed here i chained these methods the reason i'm able to chain them is because these methods return the daytime object itself so you're able to chain all these methods we could even chain this to the set time zone call here and run the code and we would get the same thing. Now also note that we're changing the time after we have changed the time zone. So 2.15 a.m. here is being set in the Europe Amsterdam time zone. However, if we were to change the date and time before setting the time zone, then after we would set the time zone, it would adjust the date.
date and time. So for example, if I remove this from here and we did it before setting the time zone like this and we run the code, we see that now we're getting 4.15 a.m. and not 2.15 a.m. because we're setting 2.15 a.m. in UTC time zone because at this point the time zone of the daytime object is UTC and then after we've set the time, we're changing the time zone to Amsterdam and then the time gets adjusted to that time zone. You could also change the date and time using the timestamp via set timestamp method, but I'm not going to go through all the available methods on the daytime object because it would make this video too long. Instead, I'm going to leave the links to the appropriate documentation in the description so you can check them out and review all the available methods. Now, even though we're not going to cover all these methods, I want to cover some of the important methods. And one such important method is create from format method, which allows you to create a daytime object from a specific format. So if you open up the daytime class and scroll down we see that there is a static method called create from format and it accepts the format as the first argument the daytime string as the second argument and optionally the time zone as the third argument now there are many use cases for this method because it gives you the power to create daytime objects from a specific given format for example here is one use case where this could be very useful as you know in europe the date format is day month year while in the us it's month day year when we create a daytime object by passing in the date in a constructor using slashes like this for example it is going to create a daytime using this format right here which is month day year but this could be a problem if your date was expected to be in European format what if this string here was coming from a file import or from a user input or some kind of API or from somewhere else where you don't really have the control on how these dates are formatted you're just given a date in a specific format so let's extract that into a date string and let's say that this was coming from a file import or something like that. Also, let's say that instead of this format, we were getting European format using 12 slash 05. Now let's get rid of this from here and let's var dump date time and let's run the code. Now it is creating a daytime object, but the date is wrong here. It is creating December 5 and not May 12, which can be very problematic, right? If you had a day here that was over 12, something like 15, for example, then this would throw an exception because the month with number 15 doesn't exist. And therefore it is not able to parse this string. One solution to this is to replace slashes with dashes as separators or with dots. When PHP encounters dots or dashes instead of slashes, it will use your European day month year format but when it sees slashes then it uses American month day year format so we could simply use string replace and replace slash with dash and run the code and sure enough now we're getting May 15 we could also replace it with dot and run the code and it still works and we're getting May 15 now this is a good solution but this might not always be ideal solution because as I mentioned before this might be coming from a file or from API and you might not want to be running string to replace for every single date. Also, what if dates were not in this format and it was in different format entirely, then you would have to have specific logic in the string to replace and replace some other characters maybe and so on. This is where create from format method can be used as another and probably a better solution. We can tell PHP that we have a date in this specific format and have it create the proper daytime object for us. So instead of creating daytime object this way, we can use the create from format static method and pass in the format that we're expecting and in this case that is day month year and an hour minute and a.m. p.m. indicator and we can get rid of the string replace from here now let's clear this out run the code and we have a bug here because this is not supposed to be m this should be i to indicate the minutes let's run the code again and we get the correct date and time now there is something i want to show you let's say that we did not have the time portion here let's remove that time from here and let's get rid of the time from here and let's run the code we see that it is using the current time and that's the current time in the UTC time zone. Now when we were creating date time using the new date time object and only passing in the date here the time was set to zero right to midnight. As you can see the date is correct May 15 but the time is set to zero which is midnight. However when you create a date time object using create from format and you don't specify the time then it will use the current time. So that's something to be aware of. If you want to use the midnight then one solution is to specify 
specify the time or the other solution is to simply set the time to zero and when we run the code now we see that the date is set correctly and the time is set to zero also note that most of the methods offered by daytime objects have corresponding procedural functions that can be used instead for example we have date create function that is alias to new date time we also have a function called date create from format which is an alias to daytime create from format method we have a method called date time zone set and get which are the aliases for the daytime set time zone and get time zone methods and so on i personally prefer to always work with the daytime objects directly for a few reasons one of them is that it makes it easier to test and maintain later all right let's move on to comparing dates daytime objects can be compared using the comparison operators for example we have two daytime objects here both of them are set to may 25 but the time on one is set to 9 15 a.m and the other one is set to 9 14 a.m we can then use the less than operator greater than operator the comparison operator and the spaceship operator to compare these two daytime objects so if you open up the terminal and run the code we see that the first comparison returns false because 9 15 is not less than 9 14 the second comparison returns true because 9 15 is greater than 9 14 the third one returns false because they're not equal and fourth one returns one because that's how spaceship operator works right if the first one is greater than the second one it returns one if the first one is less than second one then it returns negative one otherwise if both are equal it returns zero let's set this to equal and run the code again and as you can see we're getting false for the first two and we're getting true for the comparison operator and zero for the spaceship operator you could also simply compare timestamps of the two dates so if you have two daytime objects you could call the method get timestamp on both and compare those because timestamps are just integers right or you could use string to time function to convert date strings into timestamps and then compare those timestamps instead we could also calculate differences between the two daytime objects using the diff method and the diff method returns a date interval object let's see an example so let's change the second date to march 15 3 25 a.m and let's var dump daytime one diff daytime two let's clear the code and run it and as you can see we're getting date interval object and it contains the year month day hour minute seconds and so on and it also contains the total number of days between the two dates so as you can see the difference between these two are 71 days or two months 10 days five hours and 50 minutes so you could use these properties here to get the most precise difference between the two daytime objects or if you only care about the difference in number of days then you could use this days property here there is another property here called invert which is set to one in this case and it is set to one if the interval is negative time period and otherwise it's set to zero let me explain what that means so when we compute the difference using the diff method what happens is that it's going to subtract the daytime one object from the daytime two object in this case the daytime two object is less than the daytime one object and therefore it results in negative number right so the diff difference essentially is negative 71 days but instead of using negative numbers here it uses the invert property to indicate that this difference represents the negative time period if we computed the difference in reverse way using daytime 2 diff daytime 1 then it would be subtracting daytime 2 from daytime 1 and in this case daytime 1 is greater than daytime 2 and when we subtract daytime 2 from daytime 1 it would result in a positive number so if we run the code now we see that invert is set to zero and number of days is still set to 71. Now let's open up the diff method here and let's open the date interval class. As you can see the date interval class has all these properties here which are set to public so we could essentially simply echo out the diff in days like this and run the code and we get 71. Now if we open the date interval class again we see that it has a method called format which means that we could actually format it in a more readable way. So instead of echoing out the days we can echo out format and we can refer back to the PHP's documentation for the valid format. So let's go back to the PHP's documentation on the format method on the date interval class and we see the available formats here so as mentioned here every format character must be prefixed with a percent sign so we could use percent year to get the number of years in differences we could use percent lowercase d to get the number of days in difference and so on so let's test this out let's do percent d and let's add the new line here and run the code and we see that the actual difference between days is not the total number of days but is the number of days between here so that's 10 days difference so we could do difference in year year, difference in month, and difference in days. 
So let's run the code again and we see that we have zero years, two months and 10 days. And then we could also specify hours, minutes and seconds. Run the code and we see that we get five hours and 50 minutes. If we wanted to get the total number of days, we could use the percent sign A and this will give us 71 days. Now to get the actual sign, whether it's positive or negative, we can use percent uppercase R and run the code. And we see that we're getting positive 71. And if we reverse this and we did daytime one difference daytime two and run the code, we get negative 71. You could actually create objects of date interval classes directly and then use those interval objects to do some calculations on the dates. For example, we could create an interval variable here and set it to the new date interval object. And the date interval object expects a single argument called duration. And for the valid formats of the duration, we can refer back to the PHP's documentation on the constructor for date interval class. And we see the duration format must be prefixed with the letter P indicating the period and then we can use any of these designators. So for example we could do something like P to D and this would indicate two days interval. So if we var dumped interval and run the code, we see that the day is set to two. We could set something like P3M to D and this would indicate three months and two days interval. So if we clear this out and run the code, we see that month is set to three and day is set to two. Now we can use this date interval object to perform some calculations using the add and sub methods on the daytime objects, which can add and subtract date intervals. So for example, let's say that we had this daytime object here, which is May 25, 9, 15 a.m. and we wanted to add three months Months and two days to it. So we could do daytime add interval and then echo out the formatted date. Let's clear it out, run the code. And sure enough, we're getting August 27, 2021, which is three months and two days after the May 25th, 2021. We could also subtract the date. So we could call sub here and subtract the same interval. And let's print the same thing. Let's clear it out, run the code. And we see that first we added three months and two days, which turned date into August 27. And then we subtracted three months and two days which brought us back to May 25th. Now something to note here is that if we flip the invert flag on the interval object and we try to add that interval it would actually subtract it instead. So let's say that we simply flipped invert to one. So let's run the code now and we see that first it subtracted three months and two days which resulted in February 23rd and then it added back the three months and two days which brought us back to the May 25th. So it's something to be aware of when you're adding and subtracting date intervals, make sure that you know what the invert flag is set to, whether it's the negative or positive time period. Notice that when we modify the object using one of these methods, it actually modifies the original object directly. I can show you this in a better example why this is important and why it could actually cause some problems in your application. For example, let's say that we have the from and to dates where from date is the current date and the to date is one month from the from date. So let's get rid of this and let's set the from date to new new date time object and then to date should be set to one month from the from date. One way we could do that is we could simply create another date time object here and add one month interval. So we could do new date interval P1M and then we could simply do echo from format month day year and then to format month day year. Let's clear this out, run the code and sure enough we're getting the current date which is June 6 and we're getting one month after the current date which seems to work right however this won't always be accurate because the from date can be different right it will not always be the current date and we don't always want to recreate the same object that we're creating from the from date and pass in all the necessary time zones and other arguments and so on to recreate the exact same object to only add the one month to it we want to do something like this we want to simply add one month to the from date time and you might think that this would work if we run the code we see that it does not work. Instead of getting the June 6, which is the current date, we're getting July 6, which is one month after the current date. So essentially making a change here also affects the original object. And we talked about this in the previous lessons when I talked about how the variables are created and how objects are stored in a ZVAL container and so on. So you can refer back to the object comparison lesson if you want to refresh on that. But essentially what happens is that when we modify anything on the object, it affects the original object 
aspect as well. Even when we assign it to a new variable like that, it is not creating a copy or a clone of the original object. Both from and to variables point to the same object in memory. So when one of them is changed, the other one is also changed. Even if we remove this from here and we simply assigned to to from, and then we changed the to object and ran the code, it would still result in the same issue. But we want to make this work, right? This looks pretty good and very readable, but it does not work. One solution to this is to simply use clone keyword to clone the from object and then add the interval to it. So if we run the code now, we see that the from object remains unchanged and then to date is one month after the from date. We can actually var dump both from and to and run the code and we see that these are two different objects. This is number three and this is number two. We can even compare them using the triple equal comparison and we see that it returns false. If we did not use the clone method and we compared it using the triple equal comparison which is the identity operator and we run the code we see that it's actually the same object. And I know I've said this a lot but it's important topic and you will avoid a lot of headache later down the road when you're passing around daytime objects in your methods and functions because if you pass this date object in a method which then maybe changes the time zone or changes the date or time it will actually affect original object that's being passed into that method as an argument so that's why this is important another solution is to use immutable daytime objects and immutable daytime objects you guessed it right are immutable meaning that once it's set it won't be changed instead every time you make a change on the immutable daytime object it actually creates a new immutable daytime object without affecting the original object this is very useful because it solves this problem right here and we don't need to use the clone keyword and also sometimes you don't want the dates to be changeable once you set the date you want to make sure that it does not get changed anywhere in the code even when you're passing it as an argument to a method or a function so we could change this new date time to new date time immutable and now when we add one month to the from object and we run the code we see that the identity operator now returns false indicating that the from and to are actually two different objects and the dates are actually correct as well now there is also something to be aware of when using daytime immutable objects you can no longer do something like this you cannot change the time or date without assigning it to a variable because every time you modify the object it creates a new object so you have to reassign it to a variable so let's say that we wanted to add a year to it so we would do add new date interval and p1 year and let's get rid of this var dump and run the code we see that the year has not been added it's still only adding one month that's because this is returning the new object and it's not modifying the original object which is the whole point of the daytime immutable class right so to make this work we have to reassign it to the variable 2 and we run the code and now the year has been added Sometimes you want to iterate over all the dates available in a given period. Luckily, PHP has a class called date period, which can be used to do that. Let's look at the documentation of the date period class. And as you can see, you can create date period class different ways by passing different types of arguments. For example, you could pass the start interval and end date, and it will give you all the available dates between the start and end using that interval, or you could pass in start interval and number of recurrences, and then it has some available methods on it as well. Also notice that for the start and end arguments, type hint is daytime interface. And this is because you could pass in either the immutable daytime or the regular daytime objects because both of them implement this interface. So let's test this out. Let's create a period for a given month and see what we get. So we'll create a variable period and set it to new date period. And the start date would be May 1st, 2021. Then we'll pass in the date interval. So we'll do new date interval. And we want the interval to be by one day and let's pass in an end date which is going to be May 31st. So we're going to create another daytime object and set it to May 31st, 2021. Let's iterate over the period and get the date and let's echo out the formatted date. Let's clear this out, run the code, and sure enough, the date starts from the May 1st and goes all the way to May 30th and it excludes the last day. If you wanted to also include the end date, then you would have to modify the end date by adding one day to it. And you could simply do that by calling another method that is available on the daytime object using modify and simply do plus one day and let's run the code now 
and we see that the end date which is May 31st is now included. We could change the interval to go by three days instead of one day and let's run the code and we see that now it jumps three days instead of one day. We could also instead of passing in the end date just pass in number of recurrences so we could pass in an integer something like three and run the code and we see that we're getting three recurrences after the start date and if you want to exclude the start date then you can pass in the option here which is date period constant called exclude start date and if we run the code now the start date is being excluded and we're only getting the three recurrences after that. There is a library called carbon that is a very nice wrapper around the date object. It gives you a bunch of helpful methods that you would otherwise have to build it yourself. Laravel framework uses the carbon library by default and I've used carbon in all of my projects even the ones that did not use the Laravel framework. So definitely check it out if you need more robust working solution with the date time objects. I might make a separate video about carbon library to actually install it and show some examples on how it works when and where to use them and so on if there is enough demand for it so definitely let me know in the comments if it's something that you would like to see this is it for this video thank you so much for watching please hit the like button if you enjoyed it and found it useful it really helps me with the youtube's algorithm to bring this video in front of developers like you who may benefit from it if you're new to this channel consider subscribing to make sure you don't miss any of my new videos and to help me grow thanks again and I'll see you next time.